2014-15. He is well known to all of us. He is a very dynamic president. He hails uh, from the IT capital of India, Bangalore. He is also son-in-law of the soil. Sir, I have completed my CA in 1998. When I have completed my CA, first time I have met you at Bangalore campus. I am very much impressed with your uh, presentation. I am in touch with you on those days itself. Sir, still you are having the same uh, dynamism. Sir, still we recollect the uh, SIRC seminar hosted by Bangalore branch during your tenure as a SIRC chairman. The very good arrangement, sir. The Anil, sir, is a well-known faculty for taxation of capital gains, states, and all those things. Is a very uh, young faculty. Apart from taxation, he is a regular speaker in GST also. He has uh, uh, taken several seminars and lectures on various professional topics, interest and professional topics. Apart from academics, he is very active in cultural activities also. When we have thought of a seminar on this aspect, our treasurer Jagan Mohan Rao has suggested uh, Anil Guru, and immediately uh, when we called him, he has accepted. We thank Raghu Garu and uh, uh, Anil Garu for accepting our invitation and coming to the seminar. In spite of uh, your all busy activities, sir, now we are on in third wave of Corona. As per the media reports, this is the first phase of the third wave. Uh, as per the recent reports, many of the uh, elders are getting neuro problems in this wave, and similarly. now more and more kids are also being affected yesterday i came to know that 11 years kid are affected with corona members please be cautious please take care of your health and your family health we see that appropriate insurance is uh, there for you and it is active and it is readily available uh, whenever urgency whenever there is an urgency members i assure you that the speaker is going to deal the entire subject from scratch that is from the contract notes to the end of the filing of the return sir please uh, take as much time as you could sir there is no time limit all our members are very eagerly looking to uh, hear your presentation i also uh, congratulate uh, nellur branch chairman sujit kumar jain and uh, nellur branch secretary arun kumar for accepting our invitation and uh, coming as a special invitees apart from uh, nellur branch chairman and uh, secretary uh, their members have also joined in this meeting i thank uh, nellur branch members also dear members uh, please pose as many questions for interactive session so that uh, all members will be uh, get good idea and knowledge about the subject with these few words now i with these few words i request uh, ca k rohini to present the bio data of today's chief guest uh, ck raghu garu jai hind jai aise thank you uh, committee so for you you are uh, first of all i like to thank our management committee of ongol for conducting this sir this is very helping to us in getting more knowledge thanks again uh, uh, about garu uh, he is born and brought up in and it is the saint jo college of farmers city of bangalore and elected as a president of the institute of chartered accountants uh, chartered accountants of india for the year 2014 15 uh, he is a fellow member of the icai with the more than 24 years of professional standing honorary member of certified public accountants of australia uh, senior partner of uh, k ragu and co a leading firm of chartered accountants in bangalore Uh, specialized in taxation audit business investment and technology consulting services uh, he is uh, elected as a president of the institute of chartered accountants chartered accountants of india 
by 22nd Central Council on 12th February 2014 for the year 2014-15, uh, and elected as a Vice President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India by the Central Council on 12th. Um, the Central Council of the ICAI from two key two terms. Um, and directors, uh, Board of Indian Overseas Bank, uh, nominated by the Ministry of Finance as an independent director. Former board member of the International Federation of Accountants of New York, a member of Audit Committee of the International Federation of Accountants for 2015, and chairman of the CSR Committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Uh, he hold the positions in 2014 and 15 internationally as a technical advisor for the Board of uh, International Federation of Accountants, New York, a member of the Board of the Con Confederation of Asia and Pacific Accountants, chairman of the Committee on Education, uh, technical advisor on the Board of SAFA, technical advisor to Professional Consultancy Organization Development Committee of IFAC, member of the South Asian Federation of Accountants Assembly, member of the Membership Development Committee of XBRL International, International, member of the New York Chapter of the Institute, New York in, uh, Chapter of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, and nationally, uh, he holds uh, many positions as a member of the Board of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority, a member of the National Advisory Committee of Accounting Standards uh, by the Ministry of the Corporate Affairs Government of India, member of the High Level St Steering Committee for the Implementation of XPRL based data submissions by bank, member of the Working Group constituted by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs in the areas of corporate governance, corporate social responsibility, and other aspects for the corporate affairs. And he is a member of the task force in the Ministry of Corporate Affairs in regard to the plan budget of ministry for the 12th five-year plan. He is a member of the advisory committee on mutual funds of security and exchange board of India and SEBI. And he is a member of the MCA 21 stakeholders committee constituted by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs for ensuring continuous improvements in service delivery under MCA 21. Member of the Technical Committee on Budget and Accounting Standards for Urban Local Bodies constituted by the Ministry of Urban Development. And he is a member of the uh, Qualified Quality Review Board, an independent audit regulatory for the public in interest entities. Member of the Regional Monitoring Committee of MBFCs in Karnataka, member of the working group constituted by the Reserve Bank of India for addressing implementation issues for and formulation of operational guidelines in the context of IFRS convergence for the banks and NBFCs in India. And he, is a he was a member of the RBI working group to review the norms, of, uh, norms for the implementation, uh, sorry, norms for impanelment of statutory auditories in public sector bank. Member of the Audit Advisory Board constituted by the Office and Office of the Controller and the Audit General of India. Chairman of XBRL, XBRL India, member of the Government Accounting Standards Advisory Board for Union and States constituted by the CNJG. Member of the India UK, that is Indo UK Task Force on Corporate Affairs constituted by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and member of the task force depart of the Department of Public Enterprises so to provide professional and technical support to the DPE in the process of uh, finalization of MO MOU department documents. A member of the Insurance Advisory Committee constituted by the Insurance Leg Regulatory Department Authority, IRDA. Member of the governing body, governing body of the Inst National Institute of Public uh, finance and policy. These are all the positions uh, he hold in 2014 and 15. Uh, sir, uh, Raghugar, by knowing all the above, uh, sir, we understood that 
you are enhancing the name and fame of the various institutes accounting bodies including our icai uh, nationally and internationally by providing your service sir. Uh, we are uh, thank you sir uh, today we got an opportunity to get a session with you uh, thank you sir uh, once again handing over to you sir thank you thank you <clears throat> thank you rohini for having introduced me in a very detailed fashion of course yeah. most yeah most of the uh, you know profile what you have uh, read is what the positions i have held but today if you ask me what is my role i am back to the profession like all of you working full time in office then focusing more time on my health focusing more time mm -hmm. on family these are the three new things which i have added to my profile i could say i am consciously trying to see that because of the pandemic because of the lockdown i am able to spend more time with the family more time on doing yoga exercises everything of course uh, my my life was extremely hectic when i was in the council i used to travel a lot to many countries to you know within uh, within the country we used to uh, you know cross cross the whole country and life was very very hectic and uh, because you are representing on so many international bodies and you are representing the yeah. uh, uh, the institute at various regulatory forums life has been very hectic but i can say now life is very very comfortable i am quite happy and i am very happy to be a part of this um, evening program when uh, rajendra prasad uh, called me up and invited me uh, you know uh, to come to this program i readily accepted invitation because i still remember having visited uh, rajendra prasad and his father subrao i think when uh, you know way back when i visited mongol for the first time and in fact i'm very happy to know that uh, our senior member from mongol mr bala is also joined us on the webinar today bala sir is my father's very good friend i know him from many many years and i still remember during my first visit to mongol i stayed in uh, i wanted to stay in a hotel mr bala refused and said no mr raghu you are not staying in hotel you are staying at me i have enjoyed the hospitality at his home a very very uh, you know hospitable person very nice to you know meet you bala online i am i am sure all the members of mongol branch um, would be happy to have a mentor like mr bala in the branch the kind of efforts what they have put in to create this branch rajendra prasad i think you have been doing an excellent job as a chairman of the branch in spite of the pandemic you are conducting online programs you are trying to get the best speakers across the country one big advantage uh, what uh, the branches have today is that they are able to get the top speakers across the country today if you want to get a good speaker from bombay it is not very difficult and today speakers are also having the time to spend to share their knowledge so you are you can get a speaker from bangalore you can get a speaker from delhi you can speak a, get a speaker from calcutta and thanks to our good friend mr anil bardwaj from bangalore who has been uh, you know accepted to speak uh, on today's session of taxation of trading uh, in uh, and investments in shares and mutual funds a very very relevant topic uh, uh, rajendra prasad you have chosen for the benefit of members because today what is really happening is that the stock markets are booming we find more and more investors um, you know getting into the stock markets and today with platforms like zero da available you are able to open a online trading account so easily with all your uh, providing all your kyc never it was so easy to open a online uh, trading account and an online uh, dmat account so everything has been streamlined and a company like zero da which is from bangalore is today one of the biggest players and what i see today is that among the younger generation Uh, especially in a city like bangalore i come from the capital uh, you know it sector a lot of youngsters a lot of my clients who work in the software uh, space i find that they are investing in stocks and shares at their free time and uh, yes they come to us with lot of uh, information providing to us stating that they've uh, traded in options they've traded in futures some of them in derivatives and then you know the whole lot of work for you as a chartered accountant so i'm very sure um, uh, mr anil barwad will uh, guide all the members as to how accounting should be done what are the various options available for taxation of short term capital gains then how exactly you should go about maintaining the books of accounts uh, you know in case um, the transactions exceed a particular threshold uh, it's a very very relevant topic and i'm sure all the members would be immensely benefited uh, by this session i'm also happy to note that uh, the nello branch chairman sujit kumar and his team is also viewing the very the webinar my greetings to you sujit kumar and uh, all the managing committee members of the ongol branch 
for the excellent work you're doing for the profession. I still remember my visit to the Ongol branch when the branch was inaugurated. Uh, you know, extremely delighted to know the kind of activities, the kind of uh, work the Ongol branch is doing for the members and students. I'm sure under the dynamic leadership of Rajendra Prasad, uh, more and more uh, good activities would be uh, conducted for the benefit of members. I also see here Mr. Ratnam Gupta from the from Anandpur, another senior member who has always been uh, working for the profession. I've been seeing him right from the time I was uh, doing my CA. He used to visit my house to meet my father. And then Subarao. Subarao is a storehouse of information. Whenever you get any WhatsApp messages from Subarao, I make it a point to ensure that I read it because Subarao doesn't send all and sundry forwards. One thing about uh, you, Mr. Subarao, you're sending forwards that are required for the profession for updation. And please continue to do the good work of sharing the good knowledge amongst the, apps, amongst the members through WhatsApp. My compliments to you for sharing the knowledge, uh, Mr. Subarao. Friends, uh, Rajendra Prasad has requested me to speak for about 10 minutes as to what is expected from all of us, considering that we are facing a pandemic. Yes, as Rajendra Prasad very rightly said, the COVID-19 has impacted the entire economy. Uh, all the economies around the world has been impacted. If you see the recent uh, press reports, uh, we see fresh uh, you know, waves of uh, COVID has engulfed many Asian countries. And whether it's the, uh, you know, you can say the third wave or the fourth wave, but yes, all these countries which had opened up, even a country like America mm -hmm. opened up, now are putting some additional restrictions. So what has happened is the entire economy around, economies around the world have been impacted and uh, multiple lockdowns has really impacted the economies. Uh, and if you look at India, we have had two lockdowns, we've had two waves and the second wave was very, very bad. Uh, all of us have seen how our near and dear have suffered, how many of our members have lost their children, they've lost their you know, spouses. And uh, it is very, very, very uh, you can say, disturbing to note that uh, uh, the second wave of the pandemic was very, very uh, frightening for the profession also. But having said this, friends, um, I can only say that uh, today uh, lockdowns have been lifted. The overall uh, business con uh, you know, confidence was very poor, but now it's slowly improving. I only wish that we don't encounter the third, lock uh, third wave, which, we, which is widely being said that it will come by the end of next month. I'm only praying God that we should not have a third wave and vaccinations should uh, you know, uh, increase and uh, more and more people should get vaccinated. I think it's our duty and uh, as a citizen of this country to motivate people who are not vaccinated, to encourage them to go for vac vaccination. It could be your maids at home, it could be your gardener, it could be your uh, drivers. So please ensure that they all are vaccinated. I think each one, of, each one of us have a responsibility to see that how we help the government in countering this uh, pandemic. Friends, uh, considering the fact that COVID has impacted the economy as chartered accountants, it is absolutely essential for us to understand how each of these uh, sectors are performing. Because what really happens is the client comes to you for advice. Uh, you, you find that he's in a sector which is vulnerable because of COVID. You might find that he's in a sector that uh, you know, nothing positive might happen in the next two or two, three years. So it is essential for you to sort of understand how each of the sectors are performing. So I will just quickly take you through a few sectors that have been impacted very badly. If you look at the manufacturing sector, uh, you know, what is being said that uh, earlier China was a global manufacturing hub. 28% of the total global manufacturing output was being uh, manufactured by China. But slowly, a lot of companies are moving away from China and uh, India is being uh, looked at a preferred destination. Thanks to the proactive uh, you know, initiative of the government, we find a lot of investments are happening in India. And then we also have competition from neighboring uh, countries where uh, investments are flowing into Singapore, Indonesia, and a lot of other countries are also getting uh, investments in the manufacturing space. So manufacturing space is something which will grow. And I would uh, suggest that it's essential for us as child accountants to understand as how this uh, manufacturing sector would uh, continue to grow in the years to come. Then coming to the IT sector, coming from an IT, uh, you know, IT city, here the IT sector has not been impacted. All of you might be seeing the results of some of the top IT companies. Most of the companies have performed well. And uh, today the employees are working from home, work from home is the new normal. And uh, many, many people have, you know, returned to their hometowns and they're working from their hometowns. So we find that the IT sector has not been impacted. 
But yes, all the support services like the real estate spaces that were occupying, the cars that were being used to provide the, uh, you know, ferrying the IT staff, and all the other ancillary activities have been impacted very badly in a city like Bangalore. Uh, because we found that Bangalore highly uh, is dependent on IT companies, unlike uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra, which is not dependent so much on IT companies. Uh, Karnataka, that is Bangalore, is dependent on IT companies, and all the support services for the IT companies have been impacted very badly. So, as such, IT sector is doing well, and uh, all of them are working from home, and this will continue. And going by what is happening globally. I don't see any impairment happening in the IT sector. All IT support services uh, are the uh, you know sec uh, supports are the ones that are getting impacted. Coming to healthcare sector, healthcare has been doing very well thanks to COVID. Whether it's pharmaceutical companies, whether it's clinical research companies, whether it's um, you know uh, you know uh, you know even uh, simple things like diagnostic centers, hospitals, nursing homes have been doing extremely well. So a lot of new investments are flowing into the health sector. Government is also encouraging, um, you know, a lot of um, providing a lot of fiscal incentives for the private sector by providing them with concessional loans for the health sector. So health sector is bound to increase. So any new investments coming in the health sector would be productive for the clients. This is something which we need to keep in mind. Aviation sector has been hit very badly because of the fact that none of I think I'm sure uh, most of us would not have traveled over the last one one and a half year. So this has been impacted very badly, but Yes, things once improves, I think aviation also will start looking up. Telecom has been benefited a lot thanks to the you know, telecommunication bandwidths available in our country, 4G, which is available uh, in most parts of the country. Uh, today, we are able to speak um, uh, to each other, getting connected to each other thanks to the telecom bandwidth, the data affordability that is there. People are able to have data packs and reach out to people. Business meetings are happening on Zoom. Professional meetings like this are happening on Zoom. So this, uh, you know, the telecommunication space would continue to grow. They're all doing well. And this is something which uh, one should keep in mind. Insurance sector, looking at uh, the penetration of insurance in our country, insurance, if you see, has not, uh, we do not have a high penetration. If you go to a country like Australia, you find that the penetration is as high as 70 to 80%. Whereas if you look at India, maybe the penetration is just 2 to 3%. And uh, very rightly, Rajendra Prasad said that if members of our profession have not taken any insurance, please ensure that uh, you cover yourself. A lot of new uh, initiatives have been launched by the Institute. In fact, Mr. Prasanna Kumar had called me a few days back requesting that I should speak at this uh, seminar conducted by the Ongol branch. Prasanna Kumar is the vice chairman of the committee for members in practice, been doing an excellent job. A lot of in, 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 you know, new uh, you know, uh, uh, Offers have been given to the discounted offers are giving to the members for software, for hardware, for insurance products, whether it's general insurance, medical insurance. My compliments to Prasanna Kumar for the good work he's doing. And considering the fact he is from your state, I'm sure he will continue to work for the welfare of the members across the country. My compliments to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Prasanna Kumar. So insurance sector is growing fast. Uh, if you look at uh, the medical insurance space, today um, I was speaking to a few doctors known to me. They say, Mr. Raghu, many, many patients who were admitted for COVID have not been insured. It's a very shocking state of affairs. Even the lower middle class, upper middle class have not covered adequately insurance. In fact, uh, the, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India provides support to chartered accountants who are, who are you know, from, uh, who have passed away. Families of chartered accountants where CA is no more. We provide financial support to them. They come to me for getting my authorization as, as far as the child phone in Bangalore, come to me as a past president and I need to go through all the papers and sign. And I find that many of them have not taken insurance at all. You know, CAs with, uh, in the age bracket of 45 to 50 to 55, I find that they've not taken insurance. This is something uh, which all of us should keep in mind. So insurance sector will grow very fast. This is something which you need to keep in mind. And uh, this is uh, uh, essential for us to understand this because the penetration of insurance is very low in our country. Coming to the agricultural sector, agricultural sector is impacted uh, by COVID, by you know the money flow reducing in the entire um, you know economy, and we find that even the sometimes the nature also is not in favor of uh, the agricultural sector. Many many sec uh, you know states have suffered uh, during this particular uh, pandemic, and uh, what is very important is why we need to understand. I've just given you a few sectors. There are many other sectors like the travel, the hospitality. 
they've literally closed down you can say hardly any international travel is happening domestic travel rooms are running empty if you go to a big five star hotel in bangalore the room occupancy is about 8 to 10% you know that is a kind of hospitality that is there uh, you know that uh, occupancy that is there so as chartered accountants when clients come to us and ask us what is it we need to do in this pandemic whether we could invest in this sector whether this is the education sector again is booming thanks to online education we find lot of investments are coming in uh, in a lot of startups in the education space so we as chartered accountants should understand how uh, each of the sector is performing in this pandemic the next 3 years 4 years so that we are able to handle the clients we should instill confidence in them give a positive support to them and try to see how we can support them in this troubled time because they trust on us you know as chartered accountants our clients will look upon us for support and it is our duty to motivate them to give them a you know a right picture handle them and see that uh, you know you are helping the clients in the areas where they are having a let us say a client is having a concern in you know he wants additional working capital you should try to see whether you are in a position to help him if you find that a client wants to close his business vertical you should be in a position to study and tell him yes sir it's better that you close down if you want your client he's got surplus money want to invest in new sectors what are the sectors he could invest so proactively you should guide your clients to take the right decisions in these troubled times and chartered accountants being trusted advisors i think uh, the clients would be very happy to get our advice friends i would like to uh, you know uh, conclude my you know, welcome remarks by what is it we as practicing chartered accountants should do in the next 3 years or let us say next 3 to 4 years i have 10 points i would like to tell all these 10 points to all the practicing cas who are watching this uh, webinar number 1 one thing we need to keep in mind is that traditional areas of practice are dwindling filing of income tax returns filing of gst returns filing of tds returns yes compliance has to be done for the clients but today we find that traditional practice is dwindling that is because of the automation that is taking place and we find that today clients are able to file the tax returns on their own lot of information is being auto populated so there is there was a time when i remember when i qualified as a chartered accountant in 1990 uh, you know we used to spend a lot of time in the income tax department my father also being a practitioner i used to go with him during my article shift to visit the income tax department and many a times in a week we used to go two to three times and most of the half days used to go the second half of the day is when we used to go but today faceless assessments has come you can do everything sitting at your office so the entire change that has taken place in the traditional practice is something very very impactful so it is essential for all of us as practicing practicing chartered accountants that traditional practice is dwindling your revenues from traditional practice will reduce so you need to be aware of this change and you should look at exploring new opportunities very very important so the second thing which you need to keep in mind is looking for new opportunities let us say rajendra prasad is practicing in ongol in the field of taxation he is doing bank audit he is filing tax returns he should look at being a young chartered accountant he should look at what are the new areas he could get into today it is not uh, you know very very difficult for a chartered accountant in ongol to service a client in bangalore earlier you know we we used to have clients coming from only ongol to your office but today no longer it's like that even if you have a client in bangalore you can service the client in bangalore sitting in ongol even if you have a client in singapore you can service the clients you know from ongol i have seen in places like hubli belgaum mysore mangalore gulbarga i have traveled extensively lot of cas are serving uh, you know offering services to clients situated around the world so what i mean to say is that the second important thing which what all of you need to do is look for new areas of practice you might ask me sir abu can you tell me what are the new areas of practice the lot of new areas of practice look at forensic audit forensic audit is gaining importance banks are looking at forensic auditors but they are highly inadequate forensic auditors institute has launched a certification course on forensic audit in fact i myself during this pandemic went through this certification course and i have to just give the final examination but yes this course on forensic audit conducted by the institute is extremely good if at all you want to develop some skill sets on forensic audit i think you should take up this course insolvency is gaining ground many many chartered accountants have all, uh, already become insolvency professionals those of you who want to take up a career in insolvency insolvency practice should increase and uh, if at all you are keen to get into this space yes you can get into it cyber security today what is happening all transactions are happening on internet 
Today, you're able to buy a tie, you're able to book your air ticket, you can order for food, everything is happening online. So security is a big issue. So as chartered accountant, you should give an assurance to the company that everything is happening properly. All the products and services are being delivered rightly. The payments are right. Payments are coming to the payment gateway and give an assurance that the entire system is secure and there cannot be any cyber attacks. I was on the board of Indian Overseas Bank for three years. One of the biggest uh, challenges for um, you know a nationalized bank is the cyber threats. You know the server can be could be hacked. So we create so much of uh, in, so much of investments are made to strengthen the cyber security in a nationalized bank. So even companies today have to invest in cyber security and chartered accountants with the knowledge of cyber uh, risk framework can guide companies to um, consult in the field of. Uh, Cyber security. So, cyber security, forensic audit, insolvency, investment banking. Investment banking is growing very fast. Let us say your clients want to disinvest, they're looking for some investment uh, coming in. You could be an investment banker guiding, helping the clients to get uh, their equity disinvested in their company. So, please look for new opportunities. This is the mantra. And those of you who are old who feel, Mr. Raghu, now it's not the time for us to get into new areas of practice. My suggestion is look for new partners, young partners who are dynamic, capable. Take them as partners. If you're not in a position to take them as partners, you have them on specific projects working with you. And it's possible for you to offer new services with the help of young uh, professionals with you. So all CA firms in the country have to scale up and get into new areas of practice. Number three, business consulting is growing very fast. Most of us practice in direct taxes, indirect taxes, audit and assurance. But business consulting is one area where if at all you focus yourself, there's a lot of opportunities. Let us say Mr. Bala is having a client who is having a particular concern on a particular area and Bala is able to offer consulting services. Definitely the client would be immensely benefited. And Bala will be able to charge a good fee to the client when he offers business consulting services. It could be anything. They might have a concern on the data. They might have a concern on the stocks. They might have concern on the limits, what they're enjoying. They might have a concern on the entire uh, way the, finance, uh, the financial structuring has been done. If Mr. Bala can come in and be their uh, one-stop uh, consultant, a business consultant, I'm sure uh, there's a good opportunity for all of us. And business consulting is growing very fast. You speak to any of the people, uh, partners of Big Four and you talk to them, which are the areas they're able to generate good revenue. They all say, Mr. Raghu, as far as audit and assurance is concerned, yes, we need to have that to build a relationship with the client, but it's consulting is where a lot of money is there. So business consulting is a good area. You can decide which area of business consulting is a big umbrella. If you go to the Institute, Charles Akumar Sack, business consulting has been defined. There are more than 40 to 50 areas where you can decide where you want to pitch in and offer your services. That is number three. Number four, upskilling. Upskilling, I already said, there's a need for each one of us to upskill ourselves. Certification course on concurrent audit is there. Certification course on forensic audit, on insolvency. Then we have on uh, the new emerging technologies like blockchain, then robotic process automation. Then we are having courses on uh, you know, even uh, artificial intelligence. So because all these new uh, technologies are impacting everyone. So you need to take up these certification courses and these certifications courses will help you to give the additional skill sets to offer them. Because if you do not have the skill sets, no clients will be in a position to consult you. Number five, invest in technology. Yes, chartered accountants have been consistently investing in technology. If you feel that you're not adequately invested, invest, invest in technology, provide the work from home facility for the staff, provide laptops to them, ensure that they are comfortable working 24 by seven from wherever they are. So you can uh, get the benefits of these investments. Today, if you are looking at work from home, your staff should be able to access your servers. So the data should be secure. You need to invest in high quality servers. You need to invest in legal softwares. You need to invest in you know networking software. You need to invest in, in all the uh, window platforms, etc. So there's a need for you to invest in technology. If you invest in technology, I'm sure you will be able to deliver quality services to clients, not only in Ongol, but to clients around the world. Because when you're dealing with clients around the world, you should have a very strong technology backbone. Number six, you need to work with IT professionals and IT companies. You might tell me, Mr. Raghu, our uh, small place, we don't have, we just have investment in computers, but we don't have good software. We don't have people to help us in technology application. 
you need to work with it professionals youngsters who are good in it work with them work with it companies find out what are the new softwares available whether you can automate your office or let us say a simple thing like automating your office have you invested in office automation software how many returns have to be filed you should have everything at your fingertips last year we have done 60 tax audits last year we have done 1200 returns last year we have filed 40 tds returns what is the status as of today what is the percentage of completion who is doing which work if the work mr bala has assigned the work to a person x he needs to find out whether the person x when did he start the work when did he complete the work what is the time he spent many a times you start looking at the time spent by each of your staff members on the on a particular um, client by the filing of tax and audit you find that you are undercharging the client so you need to map the time spent billing should be automated so the entire workflow in the chartered accountant's office should be automated so please invest in a good office automation software institute has recommended a few office automation software office automation software will help you to impress your improve your business productivity then seventh one hybrid workplace hybrid workplace is a new concept in a city like bangalore if for some reason uh, your staff is not able to come because they're using public transport or if you find that because of the pandemic someone at home is not well they're not in a position to come or they themselves are impacted by uh, covid uh, today hybrid work is permitted where they are uh, you know permitted to work from home and uh, flexi working also is a new concept when i was a president we started this flexi working is let us say there's a there's a lady who is um, married but children who are not able to uh, you know get back to the profession because of our commitments at home to empower such chartered accountant women we started this flexi portal so let us say rajendra prasad wants a resource uh, uh, in indirect taxes and he find that no one is available but if this lady is got the knowledge of gst if she is able to work from home she is able to offer service or even work for half day i think we should encourage flexi staffing flexi staffing means uh, flexi hour working that is you you make them work in your office for maybe half day the other half day they can work from home so hybrid working is a new thing please accept this don't believe in the concept of the staff sitting in front of you from 10 to 6 all this is changing you need to set up a system so that even if they work from home you're able to monitor the work that is happening coming to the eighth point build new client base okay fine you have been um, working with a certain set of clients and you find suddenly a certain set of set of clients have vanished because of the pandemic and uh, you uh, you find that your billing has reduced so what do you do it's absolutely essential for you to look at new clients and uh, try to build new clients and this is possible uh, you know if you get into new areas for example if you look at bangalore startup is a growing space a lot of startups have come up in bangalore where they require services of child accountants for accounting payroll compliances you know audit everything we are able to offer 24 bar 7 services to all the startups i do not know in a place like nellore i'm sure even nellore also will have a lot of startups because a lot of investments are coming from america uh, people from mongol who are staying staying in america would invest in a company in mongol taking some techno uh, engineering graduates and they run this company so we can provide uh, support services to startup or you yourself can provide uh, support to a client who's in Chennai or a startup client in Chennai or Bangalore. So get into new areas of practice, bring, uh, you know, get into new clients. Don't restrict yourself to the traditional client because suddenly post COVID, you'll realize that about 25 to 30% of your, you know, um, uh, top line would have er eroded because of uh, COVID because these guys are not doing well. They're not in a position to pay your audit fees. Number nine, network with other CA firms. Very, very important. If you don't network with other CA firms around the country, you can't grow a practice. Let us say Anil Bharadwaj is there in Bangalore. Anil Bharadwaj should be able to network with the firm in Bombay, able to work with the firm in Chennai, so that he's able to offer his services to not only the clients in these cities, even chartered accountants. So you need to work with CA firms so that work can flow from them to you. Many people feel that networking is not a success. I don't believe in that. My personal experience is that networking is a success. Only thing you have to build a connect with a firm develop that kind of confidence about your firm, your strengths in your firm. I'm sure uh, networking would help you to grow your practice. Number 10, last thing which I would like to tell all of you is that drop unremunerative clients. Clients who are not paying you well, please drop them. Absolutely, there is nothing that you, you try to make your practice smart. You realize that, you know, you're charging, let us say, 10,000 rupees for a client. But when you do the mapping of the time spent, you realize that you spend more than 10,000 rupees to service the client. Such clients are not in a position to pay you also more. 
So wherever you find an assignment is unremunerative, it's not worth having the client. You should be smart enough to drop the clients and try to focus on bigger clients where you can provide better quality of services to the client. So friends, these are some of the 10 suggestions which I thought I should give to all the practicing CAs to upskill, to diversify, to network, to invest in technology. 10 things I've already said, I would not like to repeat, but yes, uh, every crisis provides an opportunity. I, I think you will all agree with me. Generally, we take decisions, you know, and something, when there's a crisis in the family, you take some tough decision. Today, I'm sure all of your clients, uh, you'll, you'll see amongst your clients, today clients are selling unwanted properties. Clients are trying to distribute the families, uh, the properties in the family. Partitions are taking place. You know, clients are trying to sort of wind up their affairs because no one is sure how long they're alive. So what is happening is that in every crisis is an opportunity. You can see how best you could be a trusted advisor to your client. Even if he's an individual client where you're filing a tax return, you should be able to see whether you can advise him on, you know, winding up his affairs. Or if he's a young client, whether he can invest in a new, uh, uh, you know, business, which is, a, which is a growing sector. All this, I think, uh, every crisis provides an opportunity. And um, it's our duty to help the clients to navigate through trouble. It's trouble times. Whether you like it or not, it's like a flooded, the street is flooded. And uh, there's an old uh, gentleman walking. It's our duty to handhold the gentleman and see that we are able to see him through the uh, flooded stages like that. In troubled times, you should support and handhold your clients. And I, I believe that our profession has been resilient. We are having the ability. We are having the uh, uh, God has given us the uh, strength to you know, sort of help people, help businesses, help the economy, help the nation to move forward. I think it's the duty of each and every citizen uh, in this country to help uh, the nation to overcome this crisis. More so professionals like us, because professionals like us, we have a, a lot of clients respect us. A lot of clients look upon us for advice. We should guide them and try to see how you can be useful. Even small things like doing CSR activities. I think uh, we should uh, get into it. As child accountants, we can influence people. We can influence people to contribute, donate. And if you find that I was reading an article in Deccan World a few days back, where today hunger, even in the lower middle class, is very high. Many people do not have money to even, uh, uh, you know, for a two uh, for a two course meal. So if we as chartered accountants, if we as influencers can get involved in some CSR activity, either on our own or through some an organization, we should try to see whether we can help the nation. We can help to tide out the crisis. I'm sure each one of us sitting here should ponder over all this, try to re-engineer our practice, try to be useful to society. And for whatever time we live in this world, I think we should be considered and respected to be a useful citizen. Seniors like Bala have been doing excellent work in all these areas. I'm sure with their guidance, the Ongol branch is able to take up more and more activities for the benefit of the profession, for the members, students, and the community at large. And I wish Rajendra Prasad, the young dynamic chairman of the Ungol branch, all the best. Good luck to you and good luck to all the members of the Ungol branch. And I'm able to see about 90 people are watching this webcast. And I'm very happy that, uh, uh, you know, all of you are watching. Good luck to each one of you. And uh, I'm sure each one of you will be extremely successful in navigating through these trouble types. Thank you very much, Rajendra Prasad. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, very vibrant speech, sir. This Zoom has given a new opportunity for us to meet the stalwarts of the profession like you. Uh, sir, on 29th January 2014, uh, you were present uh, for the inauguration of our foundation of our Ongol branch, sir, as a vice president. Uh, we once again thank you, sir. Uh, sir, Prasanna, sir, is the backbone of our branch. Uh, and see, you have covered the entire economy review. And apart from that, you have given 10 sessions that are very much useful for the youngsters and seniors, sir. Very uh, informative. Uh, sir, you have told about the importance of automation, uh, importance of the investment in infrastructure, uh, the new concepts like uh, hybrid offices and flexi staff. Sir, we are already having some flexi staff on our roles. Sir, your mentorship is quite good, sir. Uh, very, very useful for all our members. Uh, the strength also, sir, now 94, so uh, 95. <laughs> so very happy to see you, sir. Uh, we once again, thank you for uh, coming all the way, uh, coming uh, and uh, addressing our members, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye to all of you.